Hi, everybody. So Ray and I, Ray's here. Welcome, Ray. Hi. <laughs> so we're just going to have a little chat today. And we have a list of stuff. And I'm just going to bounce things back and forth. But Ray has a list. So we're going to go through a lot of stuff that's been popping up. So I'm excited. I'm yeah, excited. Really it's been since honey and I haven't gotten to talk in a while. So it's I know fun. it's been at least a week. Maybe <laughs> two. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, every, I don't know. I think a lot of you already know the dragon. I've been on the dragon path lately. Um, mm -hmm. so I, one thing I kind of want to talk a little bit about is, and I also want your honey's kind of insight too, because I'm only getting bits and pieces and maybe we'll be able to kind of put some of the pieces together, together, um, together, together. <laughs> uh, so I want to talk about the eggs. Oh, so okay. from what I'll tell you what I know so far, and then you can kind of tell me what you can add. So what I know so far is there will be different sanctuaries spread out where these eggs are going to be nurtured and incubated kept. And, and, yeah. Yes. And then there will be specific people that will be assigned there. Um, and then I've been trying to figure out how the eggs are going to be dispersed. And so far, what I see is people coming to the sanctuaries when it's time for them to hatch and then the kind of just watching and then the dragons will pick their person. Yeah. The egg will yeah. pick. Yeah. The egg will pick. I almost feel like the egg will like turn itself around and point almost at the person. Like yeah, almost like know. a north like a compass like they'll just yeah. like no <laughs> yeah yeah like yeah. there they are they won't hatch until their person's there i'm getting okay that makes sense that makes sense yeah so some okay so but like wh what i want to look into more is where are the eggs coming from because so far i know some of them are actually being transported here through portals because there are people that are in the astral right now they keep telling me hey i in my dream last night i went and i found my egg that i had hidden in this place and i think people are going and finding all their they, all these eggs have been scattered everywhere mm -hmm. and now we're like gathering them but there's also going to be I think you're picking up on this too. New eggs, like new yeah. ones. I feel like there's also a planet or two that are having a hard time. Like the planet itself is having a hard time, but there are dragons there. And the dragons are willing to give their children a chance at a new world. Mm. I'm feeling like, um, and that's where some of them are coming from because they feel like their world is dying like the planet is dying interesting yeah i feel like there's at least two of those places yeah and even if the planet's not going to fully die it feels like the planets are de deteriorating at yeah, least like, like desolate feeling yeah and dark like yeah. there's not enough light so maybe their sun is not doing that well yeah, interesting. Yeah. And these are almost feels, fully dragon planets, I feel like. Like, there's not a whole lot of other beings there. It feels like it's mostly dragons. It feels like this is actually part of the cycle of the of the planet that they're on. This is mm -hmm. the dark phase that's going to be for a few thousand years, I think. So it feels like this yeah. is something they knew was, this is something they knew was coming. And now it's time them to feel like yeah interesting interesting yeah and they they can just hibernate through it they feel like but they want their children to have yes yeah a chance to be out of there yes so what do you do you feel that there's also gonna be okay are there any other ways that dragons can be born I do get that there is live, <clears throat> live births with some of the uh, uh, dragon species. Yeah. That's what I feel too. Yeah. That's what I feel too. So, 
So interesting. So I'm thinking about the, like, the, the live birds. So then how would that even, so are we thinking that would take place like in the wild and then these dragons would just like wander into town one day or what would that even look like? Uh, I feel <laughs> like they're, if they have a live birth, like it's massively protected, they won't let their child anywhere near human beings um, for a while. Yeah especially up here in the near future like in other places i feel like it's revered and the dragons are like embraced and loved and there's all this cooperation but here we're like at the very beginning again yeah totally yeah so i've also been getting that like some of the dragons aren't going to have wings right um so some of them are gonna be so what is your take on the portals because i know some dragons can just portal hop really mo i think all of them have the ability but i think for some of them they do it more often than others the big ones i feel like the big yeah the big like dragons you would see like in dragon slayer like in that movie like the big dragon with the wings and the fire yeah. I feel like the fire actually what popped in is that's um something they use in a portal to get rid of whatever the veil is over the portal like they'll burn it off and then go through. That's interesting. Yeah. And it's also a protective measure so that they don't go through a portal and smack into <laughs> into something that's trying to right. hurt them or yeah, that's yeah. cool. And they have That's used their fire cool. against their enemies, but it's for another purpose, like, to begin with. Yeah. Well, I feel like there's going to be more places the eggs are going to come from. Like, I feel like the eggs are going to show up. Yeah. In other they ways. They want to seed the world again. Kind of like seeding the world. Yeah. So that'll be a big thing. Oh, I want to ask you about this because, okay, so this came up when I was talking to someone, I think yesterday or the day before. So when Elisa's talking about the dragon continent, the dragon haven, that would be outside the dome, correct? Yeah. Yes. So I, while uh, I was having this conversation with this person, they were thinking it was outside the ice wall, but inside the dome. And I thought about it and I also got like a, yes, they're actually not yet, but the, there is going to be one of those continents that will be a like mid landing ground yeah. for the dragons, like in the future, not yet, yeah. but like in the future. And I think and they're it working was a on place for them in the past. Yes. Yeah, so they're rehabilitating it is what I got mm -hmm. right now. Um, yeah. As far as like, there's some dragons there that are working on healing the land and yeah, prepared yeah. for more of that to be there so that's cool because that's really people because cool. i know a lot of people have been like well are we going to get to go to the to the dragon haven are we going to get to visit and i don't think we're going to go to the far away one as quickly but the closer one we're going to have way more access to that one yeah yeah four years from now i'm getting um but certain people will get there much sooner, but in general, like four years for more general so, public type people that may not even have one waiting for them. Yeah. But the other people, like they're going to be known and they'll go there sooner. It's so interesting to think about because people are asking me that about the timeline. Like, what do you, what do you think the time, like, when do we get to actually see our dragons? And I just said one to five years. That's kind of the like one to three i think is more those accurate. who know that they have one. yeah yeah and that their mentor will know that they have one so that mentor is going to be really important for everybody in one way or another yeah yeah very cool very fun stuff man the dragons is 
And I know for a lot of people too, it's just been like waking them up to being excited about life and finding joy. And because even with things changing, there's a lot of us that have kind of still felt like, well, what's my role going forward? Like what, yeah. what's going to be fun for me to do in this new earth? Like everything's, you know, it's going to take a while for things to change. So I think this is that for a lot of people. Yeah. They're, it, that's why we're finding out about it now to give you hope to continue on that like it, uh, it is going to get better, you know? Yeah. Well, we all have a role that's probably fairly big. We just don't know what it is yet. Most of us don't. Some of us do because we've already started on it, but not everybody knows and it's okay to not know. Totally. It's yeah. totally okay to not know. Speaking of not knowing, we didn't talk about this before, but when it comes to light language, I just want to pop this in there that a lot of people are activating their own light language right now. Mm -hmm. And um, I've been encouraging people to do so and to do their own channeling, you know? So I just want everyone to know that it's, it's important to know that you don't need to understand why you're channeling or what you're channeling. The point is, is just channeling it, speaking it, singing it, dancing it, writing it. That in itself is what, what needs to happen. That is the, the thing. Beginning. That's why you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Beginning. And the, the understanding will come with time. You'll get more and more understanding, but it's not necessary for it still to have a positive impact. Yeah. Well, and also, you know, just going in with the intention that you only accept what's in your highest good then you know, even if you don't know what it is, like it's in your highest good because really we control the stream of information. Yeah. So, yeah. And that's also another thing, like to not be afraid of light language that comes through that's more like, cause someone once told me one of my light languages, I was channeling like a dark entity or something. And it's because the energy of it was very like, sun, very like, like core and root and tribal and, um, but it was not, it was still in my highest good. It was just more of a purging, transmuting, like a mm -hmm. anger it, that that's still in the highest good. So it's like, don't think just because it's not like all oh, love and light and beautiful sounding that not all light language sounds like that. Yeah, no, no. And I think the feelings of things come through, you know, yes. a lot of us have been warriors in a past life or whatever we've had all kinds of crazy past lifetimes and we're going to bring that through and also bring messages through that are important for people yep yeah and zakoya is the original dragon writers i recently discovered yeah um and so they're going to be connecting with a lot more of the dragon writers as they're waking up um and the people who have been dragons as well so just keep that in mind that sequoia may be coming to you and you know just you'll know if it's them because if you've seen any of my videos where i'm channeling them i don't know it's, it's the frequency they're very intense it I, you'll know i feel like people will just know mm -hmm. they're very intense you can tell that they're ancient that they're in serious about <laughs> they're very powerful transmuters and yeah so they're coming they're a collective consciousness and they're wanting to connect individually with yeah. people right? the first thing that popped into my head when you started talking about that was that new avatar movie and the, the dragons <laughs> that are they haven't it's not released yet but there's some previews and I was just like, wow, this is like a reality. Like they're showing us a reality. Um, and it was very connected to the sea. So I feel like we're going to have a lot of um, information coming in from Lumeria and the mm -hmm. dragons. Like everything's going to start to come together. And we're going to feel like we're in some sort of sci-fi adventure movie. But it, I don't think it'll be that intense, obviously. but it's going to be like, wow, I didn't know that existed. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And Lemuria. So I know a lot of people, I don't know if anyone knows this, but I recently found out that the West coast is like the old land of Lemuria, basically. Um, 
And it's funny because I've always lived on the West Coast. <laughs> and the other day I got a little download that I've lived in this house, this spot of land, not mm -hmm. this house, but this spot of land. I've lived here before, just like thousands of years ago. So um, that was a really cool download that came through because I just, it's just crazy how things are connected. Like even through yeah. our multiple lives we revisit the same places <laughs> it's just mind-blowing it is and you can feel the energy like you can feel it feels like home to you yep exactly yeah and that's why I think it's like trust what you feel and what like I have always known like I've visited the east coast and remember feeling like oh I do not like it here I do not like it here and I don't like any of the mid midwest or any of those places every time I go there I'm like oh these are nice but I can't wait to get back to the west coast <laughs> like I just um yeah like it just feels right and good yeah. and yeah Exactly. That's how you know you've been there before. <laughs> um, so I want to talk about age reversal too. So okay. that does go along with the dragons because here's the thing. I think some people are thinking like, I don't know if I'm going to have the strength to ride a dragon. Well, don't worry. Your body's going to be in optimum health. So you'll have everything working for you rather than against you in that department. Yeah. It'll come in a multitude of ways as well. Like, um, I think the toxic load has been extreme for most of humanity. That's been experiencing like this environment that we've been in. And a lot of that will be med bed stuff to get people like, get them started. And but not everybody will necessarily have to do that. So there are people that are going to be able to do it on their own, but there'll be rare. And then, but in the future, it will not be a thing. Like aging will not be a thing. And we will realize that it's not real. Like we don't have to age. Right. So, and it'll all be about like taking care of your vessel, taking care of your body and, and it will actually work in the future when you're yeah. taking care of it because there won't be all this poison everywhere and also we'll be able to transmute anything like really easily and quickly right yeah and the thing is is once our bodies are all looking similarly aged um at some point probably after maybe like a decade we're going to kind of forget how old the person used to be. So like, yeah, <laughs> like, Oh, I used to be 75 and then I did the med beds. And now a couple of years later, I look 30 again. Like after a few years, we're just going to forget like, Oh, they used to be 75 and now they're 30. Like, it's like, they're just going to be who they are and you're yeah. going to be able to feel the essence of their soul and how old their soul is, but it's not going to be based on their appearance. So the appearance ask factor is going to kind of go away. And it's really just about like, are our souls a good match? Yeah. So that's going to open things up a lot for it the will. connection and relationship wise. It will. It'll be huge. As long as you're adults, like in your body, you're an adult. Um, you'll look at people's soul. You're not going to be you know, thinking about, Ooh, well, you're this old or whatever. You've been here this many years. You're going to say, Oh, well, your soul's a million years old and mine is too. Let's go on a date. Yeah. Like yeah. we're in a similar interests and we have similar yeah. data. Like it's just going to really open things up. Like it really is. And I just think it's something to just think about, you know, not even to like, <laughs> No, I don't want anyone to get stressed out about it or anything, no. but like, just to know that the stigma around like, oh, we're 20 years apart. Like that's no, you know, that stigma is going to just kind of go away. Yeah. And we're just going to be so much more free to really just be with people that we really resonate with. And it's going to be just about that rather than like, oh, we look good together or yeah, 3D, going 3D. Right. all that 3D behavior is going to go away. Like, we will not care. 
somebody has a big nose or somebody's like, I don't know, maybe they're not the type that you're normally attracted to. Like maybe you're usually more in love with a blonde person or a, or a black haired person or whatever. Like you will not care about any of that. It'll be about who they really are on the inside and we'll be able mm -hmm. to see it. Mm -hmm. That's going to be the beautiful thing. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think any 3D attitudes will be left by 2030. I think that's mm -hmm. all, probably 2027. I think all of that will just be like, don't talk to me like that. Like, what kind of attitude is that? Like, nobody will accept that anymore. Yeah. And I think, it's too, the hormone, you were a minute ago talking about the toxins. I think talking about the hormones, too, because... um like I posted a video recently where like talking about facial hair, women having facial hair and how like, it's just part of the environment we're in. Like it really, it's not something that we need to be ashamed about. And I've got, spent a lot of years feeling extremely ashamed, you know, of having so much body hair for a woman. Like I must not be a real woman if I'm, you know, um, <clears throat> but also that was told to me by people in my life that, you know, <laughs> that makes me less of a woman because whatever. But the point is, is that, um, that's going to really balance out going forward. Like not just the med beds, but just even after like yeah, some big events that happen and, and things really start moving forward. Mm -hmm. And the cleanup. Yeah. We're going to notice a big change in our, in our bodies when it comes to like, yeah, the hormone balance and the adrenals and all that. Yeah. Well, and people who've had like polycystic ovarian stuff, um, just hormones in general, like all the hormones, like there have been men who just don't get muscles. Mm -hmm. Like they just have, don't really have happen. Boobies. Yeah. Or they're having, um, breasts. Yeah. Yeah. Breasts. Like, but there's a word for it. I can't remember, but. Oh, I don't know the um, real word. Yeah. But yeah. it's, it's not, it's all hormonal. It's all this junk that's in our food. Oh, the thinning hair too. Like I have a receding hairline and I'm, a, this is the thing I always say, and I'm a woman, this shouldn't be happening to me because, you know, typically in men, we see receding hairline, receding hairlines and baldness and, um, you know, but yeah, so all of that's going to be balancing out. I just, it's so exciting because those things have, I think, held some of us back for so long that we've yeah. just been so concerned about them and trying to heal that part of ourselves. And like, there is ways now that you can balance your hormones and all of that, but there's like specific tests you've got to do. You've probably got to spend a good chunk of money to do it. So it's like all of that. Oh, we don't have to deal with, we're not going to have to worry about that anymore. It's like yeah. so exciting. Because if you want to be healthy now, you basically have to be cleansing constantly. Exactly. In a constant state of cleansing. Mm -hmm. Which is yeah. not going to be, I mean, I know we'll be cleansing to a point in the future just for our own health, but it will not be the big, like constant focus. Like I can't even believe how big that industry is. It's huge. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah, people are still sick because a lot of people don't cleanse and parasites mm -hmm. and just like endless stuff. And that's not going to be a thing. Yeah. It'll so be beautiful. Exciting. Yeah. What's your next? Did you want to talk about, you wanted to talk about magic. Oh, yeah. So people are going to be getting more and more of their gifts back. And it will integrate as you're ready for it. But I just feel like we're going to be seeing more. So the light spectrum is changing for our eyesight. We're going to see more. We're going to be able to do more. And we'll be able to actually do things with our bodies that we never thought were possible. So there's just going to be so much more magic in the world. Yeah. 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 And the people who have the purity of heart and purity of intentions are going to be receiving their magic 
it'll it, it's almost like a, it's protected so you're not going to be receiving all this magic and all these gifts if there is um <clears throat> sorry I'm turning my phone off um like if you have any ill intentions in your heart of wanting to use it for negative purposes you won't receive your gifts like you're not going to receive them until you're ready to use them mindfully and responsibly exactly yeah you have to have that um intention and it has to go all the way through you to your yep. subconscious before you'll be ready yep yep exactly yeah which is um i i was taught so some of the i talked to <clears throat> some of the girls in one of the chats I'm not really in any of the chats anymore but except the dragon chat which is pretty great but um they were doing the commands, the commands. And I know this is like a prime creator command, something, something. It's like a book or something. Um, but I just, I mean, as long as we're talking about it, to be mindful of what we're commanding, right? Because if you're commanding to receive all of your gifts right now, uh, that may not be in your highest good. So it's always when we're doing commands, adding on in my highest good or in the highest good. Um so that you're not getting bombarded with something that you're really not ready for or that would cause you um, unnecessary like pain or discomfort. Exactly. It's like those people who have some sort of catastrophic accident and all of a sudden, um, and I watched this person who talked about it, like they fell on their tailbone and the Kundalini happened for them. And all of a sudden they were completely aware of everything that they had been completely asleep to right before the accident. And it was, um, really, really hard on them. So you don't yeah. want to get everything at once. It's okay to take your time and get what's working or what you can handle. You know, you want, it's just not safe to do it that way yeah. for your own your brain yeah <laughs> even for your body too your it's body. like it's really yeah. stressful yeah it's stressful and i think that that's another thing to kind of bring up is manifesting versus allowing like i think a lot of us have um we can it, it's easy to take the manifesting too far and yeah. to just constantly be focused on the future and focused on what you're trying to create rather than just being present and allowing step by step to come up to you without thinking forward right um yeah i think and allowing is the divine feminine that's what we're here to heal that's what has been out of balance in our planet yeah. in our society for so long so it's extra important to focus on that right receiving being willing to just receive yeah yep. receive in receive like one step at a time like yeah rather than like i need to know the whole plan i need to know my whole mission i need all i need to, i need all this now it's like no i trust the process i trust the unfolding i trust that everything is working in my highest good and i don't have to manipulate it to be like that it just naturally is working in my highest good if i'm just allowing it to flow it will it's when we start to try to control and divert and like no i think this manifestation should happen this year I'm going to make it happen this year. It's like, but what if it's not going to, what if it's best if it happens next year, you know? So trusting that it's hard to do, but it's a it beautiful is hard, way to but Once you get in the flow of it, like it speeds up a little bit. And it also like all these beautiful things that you never thought of also come through. Mm -hmm. Totally. Yeah. So, and think about where it's motivated from. Is it motivated from some kind of fear or, you know, the, some the subconscious like beliefs that you have, or is it motivated from the space of really big openness? And I'm really ready for that. Yeah. You know, totally. Mm -hmm. like sometimes I'll even get so content, like so happy. So in the allowing that I literally don't even want anything like the right. feeling of like, oh, I really want this, or I wish I could do this, or 
literally that is like gone. Like, I'm just like, no, I am so happy in my life. Like everything around me makes me so happy that I don't even want anything. Um, and that is like a miracle. Like I, I, I always knew it was possible, but I didn't know how long it would take me to get there, you know? Mm -hmm. So if you're not there yet, just hang in there. Exactly. Yep. It's coming. Everything is is. coming. Yep. Um, so honoring the wisdom of the inner child. So I know there's like a theme between a lot of star seeds and a lot of healers and a lot of us that are here, grid workers to do this, like this ascension work, right? The theme of like, um, I wish I could have stood up for myself more as a child, or, you know, I looking back at our child self as being like naive or gullible, um, um, or weak. Right. So I, I just, I had this flash looking back at my childhood, my child, my child self, and saw the wisdom because I hated my childhood. I mean, I hated being a child. I hated all the rules that my parents imposed on me. I hated the lack of freedom, the the way people treated me as a kid, all of it, right? I wanted to run away. I wanted to end my life. There were all these things throughout up till I was 18 soon as I was 18, I was out of there, you know, I was out. And I did go back home a few times, like when I was in very desperate situations, but um, never for very long. Anyway, the point is, is that it's a beautiful shift in perspective to be able to look back at our inner child instead of saying, man, I wish, you know, that you could have stood up for yourself more or whatever and say, actually, wow, you had the wisdom to not try to control or manipulate the people around you, even though they were exhibiting that behavior, you allowed it to happen and you chose to learn from it. And you, as a kid, had the knowing that somehow this would be for your highest good. You knew that this would benefit you and that you, that this was intentional, right? The wisdom to stay, the wisdom to not run away, The wisdom to just keep getting up and trying day after day, even when it doesn't make any sense. That, I mean, that's profound. It just completely changed the way I saw my child self. So I wanted to talk, share that. Yeah. And I feel like they're, the inner child is directly connected to the higher self. Like they're in direct communication and that's the innocence of you the inner child is your innocence. And if you need to heal that innocence, definitely do the work. Like it really pays off and it helps so much to heal everything going on within you. If you work on your inner child. Yeah. And it also comes from like any leftover resentment that we have toward our parents, leftover resentment toward religion or toward the way we were raised. Cause like, I know, I mean, I'm, I'm a little closer to it. I'm 31, 30, oh my God, how old am I? Um, 32, 32. I'll be 33 <laughs> at the end of the month. Um, so I think it's just, yeah, I lost my train of thought. I started thinking about my birthday. I'm like, shit, I'm going to be 33. <laughs> <You know? laughs> That's funny. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Sure. Now it, um, it is the connections, the childhood stuff that really, if you heal your inner child, it heals up all that, all those wounded things that you yeah. have from childhood. And it's so many layers, so many layers. Like I just hope that's my biggest message for everyone is like, just don't get discouraged. Just keep going. Like it's layers and layers and layers. And just when you think you're done, there's like more layers. So it's okay. That's normal. That's just part of the process. Like I've kicked myself for the last probably five years being like, why are you still mad at your parents? You should be forgiven them already. Like you should be moved on. Like that was your childhood. You're not a child anymore. Why is it still affecting you? I've, I've kind of got that, like that militant kind of like hard critic in there, which is a wound that's surfacing. Right. But basically that it's, it, there's no, it happens differently for everyone. It, it's not like, okay, you work on it for two years and then you're going to be done. It's like, it just is what it is. And everyone's process is going to take different amounts of time. So, yeah. 
And as you do it, the beginning might be really hard, but as you continue to peel layer and layer, you know, layer after layer, your life gets better and better after that first like big healing that you do. From then on, it's like an upward slope of it's getting yep. better. Yeah. And we're only given, and we have to remember that we're only given certain pieces of information mm -hmm. at certain times. So I think some of us, we get into the mode of like, well, I want to know all the answers now, but it's like, no, you actually don't. You don't. So just, <laughs> you're that's you're going to regret that. So just like maybe stop asking for more than you can handle, you know, just deal with yeah. like what's in front of you right now. Exactly. Um, yeah. And it helps us be in the moment because being in the moment is so important not being, I only live in the future or I only live in the past. Be where you're at. Yeah. 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 And that is, it's interesting because the whole dragon thing, like I didn't even know that I would just kind of have a dragon in this life until a month ago, a month ago. And this is now a huge part of my mission going forward. And yet I was withheld this information um, and even though I loved dragons, I knew they were real somewhere. I just didn't, I knew they were real at some point somewhere, but I did not have literally the thought that they could be real on this planet when I was alive, like going forward, that thought never occurred to me. Like mm -hmm. I was blocked from that intentionally because I would have gotten so excited that I wouldn't have cared about anything else. <laughs> and I would have gotten, I wouldn't have things need to happen the way they need to happen. So right. yeah, that's why it's about allowing and trusting that if you don't know something, it's for your own good. So don't yeah. worry about what you don't know. Don't worry about what you don't know. Right. And I think, I think it was blocked from the collective as well in general. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I think it was which makes sense because think about how many of us grew up being obsessed with dragons and really like, yeah, it would have, <laughs> it would have just changed too many things. And that's the thing, like trusting that there is a divine plan. And I know that some people, okay. So like I've left religion, right? Like I don't subscribe to religious ideology. However, I do believe that there is a, there is a common thread going through all of the universes that is harmonizing. There is a harmonizing energy throughout all the universes, all the dimensions that is attempting to keep things in balance. I do know that that exists. So I know that the natural course of things is to be in balance. The natural course is to be in balance. The only th reason things get out of balance is when we go against nature. So trusting that just trusting that's hard for us because yeah. we've put our trust in the wrong people but for a long time and gotten you know burned yeah yeah i was thinking only swear words i'm like i don't know about i'm like i don't say that without a swear word burned yeah exactly yeah, yeah. yeah. this is great this has been good yeah it's been yeah. a good chat it was really good spite of all the I had lots of little interruptions just happening but yeah I know I was trying to not look so I wouldn't get distracted <laughs> but like okay mute mute mute, mute. <laughs> yeah is there any final things that you wanted to talk about today no I don't think so I just want everyone to know that like don't worry about the timing of things and just let it happen like I yeah. know we just got to let go of needing to know the answer of needing to know. You don't need to know it's going to happen whether you know when or not, it's still going to happen. So just <laughs> let it go. <laughs> yeah. Trust that your purpose will just open up for you. It will just be shown when it's the right time. And the more that you clear away, the faster that will come in because you're basically making room. Right. Exactly. To show up. Yeah. Yeah. This was great. Thank you so much, Ray. Yeah. Thank you.